Speaking of which, uh, we are going to bounce now from Los Angeles up into the uh, the second city, if you will. They they yeah. call it. They call it the second city. Why is that, Chris? Because the uh, it's second to none. I believe is why, and um, it is home. Talking about Chicago, of course, naturally the Midwest, and my my dear friend, uh, my old roustabout, David Nell, who is now my NASA nerd friend. And we were going to do the music, but this time we decided not to. David, that's all right. That sounds great. Thanks. Is for it good? Me again, it's great to be back. Well, it's look. You look like you're um, sort of. Uh, you look like you're ready to do a bit of a stand-up comedy with that brick wall behind you. Let me ask you something. Is that some sort of a set from a theatrical production? This is a, a set that is on a, for a, a paused production of Little Shop of Horrors. Ah, never heard of it, but uh, it sounds really, I mean, it sounds good. I'm and I love the use out of this thing. That's all. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you look good uh, and I know you sound good. What are you gonna, what are you gonna sing for us today? Well, Chris, uh, here's the thing about NASA. Maybe you saw the cool rocket launch this last weekend. Maybe you've heard about the space shuttle. But the truth is, uh, NASA is part of your everyday life in the things that they have invented for the space program that have become commercial products and things we use every single day. We're not always aware of it, so I wrote a little song to help educate everybody out there. Some folks will tell you that Tang and Velcro are the only things that NASA ever gave us. But I am here to set the record straight because the space program makes things that always save us. Start with satellites for the military and television. Some of those satellites are for the Google Earth Envision. High capacity batteries that are running all of our cell phones. You can thank your friends at NASA when you're calling home. Where would we be without CAT scans? And where would we be without high density graphite? Working in space is hard indeed. You know, venting all the things you need. Like ballpoint pens are right upside down, and we're never gonna stop this technology. It's the way. Go to the doctor, he sticks a thermometer in your ear. Before NASA, they took your temperature in the rear. Ever had to wash cloth diapers 17 times a day? No. You suck it up with polyacrylate and throw the diaper away. Where would we be without thermal boots? Where would we be without sports bras? Working in space is hard and need. In a vent and all the things you need. Like ballpoint pens are right upside down and heat resistant styrofoam. And we're never gonna stop this technology. It's the way. Think of all the lives saved with the invention of the smoke detector. Laser molded plastics make for better bike reflectors. Purifying water improving suits for firefighters. Space shuttles, metal alloys are making our cars lighter. Where would we be without freeze dried ice cream? Where would we be without memory foam beds? Working in space is hard to be. In a vent and all the things you need. Like ballpoint pens are right upside down and heat resistant styrofoam and solar panels and calculators and mylar blankets and temperature control and laser guidance and deep space telescopes. We're never gonna stop because technology is the way. Well, KB, I tell you what, I could go on and on. But uh, I only got a five-minute time slot, so 